This is how to be successful when you are beginning to study, or if you are actually studying, International Baccalaureate Diploma Chemistry. This is from Mr. F. Kemp. Things I've noticed that have been exhibited by successful students over the many years I've been teaching, and things which have been done by unsuccessful students over the many years which I have been teaching IB Chemistry. Okay, where do we begin? Well, I'd like to begin with some brilliant basics. Um, first of all, you need to have a particularly well organised study area, not just wiping the breakfast off the table, throwing your books down, getting stuck in by your little brother, sister, cousin, whoever, dog, cat, annoys you every two minutes. Quiet, uh, focused area where you can focus and be quiet and concentrate while you are studying is a fundamental expectation if you're going to be successful in any subject. What else? You also need an inspirational teacher, a teacher who cares passionately about their subject. And that, I think, is probably in the top 10 things you need to have. What's at number one? At number one, I would put a love for the subject. Imagine having to spend two years with something you don't love. That can be prison. <laughs> okay? We don't want you to feel like you are in prison. We want you to feel like you are enjoying the course. And the IV chemistry course, make no word of a lie about it, is a difficult course. You're only going to succeed with difficulty if you love it in the first place. Maybe you will grow into it. Yes, this is true. Some students born to do chemistry love it from the off. Other students, Think they did great at GCSE? Whee! I can do chemistry. Yes, you can. Yes, you can. But now, diploma is quite a different beastie. And one of my other pieces of many other pieces of advice in this video is to speak to the students who are one, two years above you now and ask them what they felt worked for them when they were studying their chemistry. You're much more likely to listen to them than you are to me. But at least you're watching this video. So well done on that. Humans. How do humans think? Think about all the memories that you've got. All those memories, are they, are they words? Are they underlined, fluorescently uh, highlighted uh, passages in a textbook? Are they leaf terms? No, of course not. It's being facetious. They are images. They are visuals. They are when you had your first kiss. They are when you uh, smelt coffee first time and didn't find it revolting. Uh, they are when you first met your, uh, I don't know, long lost relative or, or had toast on a, on a cold morning in Switzerland, whatever it happens to be. My point is, humans do not think in words. We think in pictures. How can we use that in our study of chemistry, using the study of any subject? The old mind maps work well. Why do they work well? Because they are in pictures. They also work well because you are having to paraphrase, and paraphrasing is a very excellent way of getting information into the human brain. People have uh, harnessed this to great effect. And these two examples you can see on the screen are from uh, one is from a previous student at my school. She wasn't my student, she was a wonderful chemistry teacher student. And on the right hand side is one uh, from this year, and there has been a revolution in note taking, we'll come to that shortly, in my classes, uh, but with students using iPads. Um, Good Notes is a popular app, not me, I don't recommend that. I've seen many students using it, so it's a great effect. And why is it effective? Because students can do screen grabs, they can do shots, they can take little videos of me teaching, they can embed that in their notes. And this is kind of paraphrasing for the modern world. We are taking many different elements, putting them together, and synthesizing something which is which is mine. You know, and everyone's favorite subject is, of course, themselves. So if you've created it, that's going to make it much more meaningful for you as a learner, much more likely that that stays in your beautiful brain. If you go onto YouTube, you'll find Alicia Wong. This is the uh, screen grab on the left hand side. Um, and she has put all of her uh, IB chemistry goodwill and um, wonderful creativity into creating probably I think one of the most successful channels on how to study 
on YouTube, which is out there. So check that one out. Again, she's using lots of visuals, lots of pictures, and lots of technology beyond what Mr. M can would ever do. But what do I suggest to my kids? When my kids come in, well, you know, the internet, as he says, is now a substitute for real human interaction. Um, at number one, uh, Richard Thorne, absolutely brilliant. Love him. However, quite a few of my students say, I don't like Richard Thornley. And thankfully, the ones that don't like Richard Thornley do like MSJ Chem, which is number two on that list. They both have very different styles. Every teacher has their own style. Not every student will like every teacher. That's just, that's just human beings. In thinking, I think it's indispensable. Um, I think student access is absolutely fantastic. Uh, I know Jeff Muse, the, the curator of that, and brilliant site, hands down. And uh, I know that that's being uh, developed for the new syllabus, which is coming as well. And number four and number five are things which I don't hear very much about um, in the IB chemistry uh, teacher group, uh, which I'm an administrator. The Smashing Science, just Google Smashing Science IB chemistry. Uh, there are uh, topic by topic synopses, synoptic questions with mark schemes going back for, for, for many, many years. Okay, um, It does have his lovely face on there as well. Uh, I don't know this chap, he seems very, very generous, and very well organized, love his site. And lastly, Ellesmere College. Ellesmere College out of the UK, they have a brilliant open, public open site where it has pretty, uh, in their words, of uh, each topic by topic area, so in Calabria, Kinetics, etc., with past paper questions underneath. It does not have a mark scheme, but that's what your teachers for, right? So this is all about you being an effective learner. If you are effectively studying, I'm trying to, I've not said it explicitly, maybe I'll say it now. Um, I've seen little value in kids, students, copying out notes. I've seen little value in highlighting uh, streams of text because they thought the text were going to feel like they had to do something. It's placebo. It makes you feel better for a little while, uh, but certainly it's no way to get the information into your brain. It's money for old rope. What works? We know what works. It works every time. And students are successful all of the time if they are using past papers, mark schemes, and critically, the examiner's reports. Okay? I know that you're on Discord, and Reddit, whatever else is kicking around at the moment. Class papers for law are freely available. Uh, everyone knows that. The IB shut them down. And yes, you shouldn't do it. Don't do it. But they are. So what do you do? You, you sit in your well-organized study area, undisturbed. You get out the 2019 November uh, PIP to higher level times of one paper, and you just go. Is that what you do? Well, you could do. There's no harm in doing that. In fact, there's a lot of benefit in doing that. But it's not a real, you know, if you're year one or you're just starting, or even if you're not doing final exam, it is not the final exam yet. So do it in bite-sized chunks. Do 50 minutes. We know, you know, it's 90 seconds per mark. So you've got, I don't know, a three-mark question. It should be taking you four and a half minutes to do it. Some three-mark questions will take you 10 seconds to do, three mark, some three mark questions will take you a week to do, okay? So do the uh, three second uh, ones that you can do as soon as possible. Now, sorry, I've got some of to go in there. My disturbed space. <laughs> what other ways can we do? Battle a friend. Have a little battle with your mate. Say, I've got this question. Question six, November 2019, paper two, high level chemistry. I don't have a screen. And maybe they do, you know. And this, this learning from a, a friend idea, learning from a, a peer, which is uh, maybe even a mate of yours, um, that's going to be so much more powerful than having Mr. M or whoever it is in front of the class just going, oh, my God. Because they know how to do it. The teachers, right? It, the, the learning is in the struggle. Okay, The worst thing a teacher can do is just answer every question, right? No, the teacher, a good teacher, I'm sure they're all wonderful. Will, will guide you to find the answer. A 
going back to, again, your idea is best. My idea will only ever be second best in your brain. That's how human psychology works. Yes, you could be an absolute genius. And I think in around about 15, 16 years of teaching IB chemistry, I've seen two kids like this. And they've actually not needed to come into the lessons. One was my previous school, uh, one's my this school I'm now. And they could literally not come to school. <laughs> and they would still get probably 95%, maybe even 100% on every paper. They're absolutely just, they can read the book, boom, done. That's it. That's not me. <laughs> that was never me. You know, I was an average chemistry student best chemistry student, I was not the worst. But Usain Bolt was not the fastest runner at school. There were kids at Usain Bolt's school that were running faster than him. But what he had was an excellent attitude and tenacity with the material. He never ever gave up. And I would suggest strongly your attitude is way in excess of your innate ability. Attitude counts for everything. Say it out loud. This thing that YouTubers do and talking about Aristotelian principle or entropy or whatever it happens to be, in saying it out loud, you, you are listening, your mirror neurons are firing, you are listening to what's being said. And that really reinforces and crystallizes the concepts which are at the heart of my chemistry. 30 minutes twice a week, why not when you've just started year one diploma chemistry? at least be doing 30 minutes twice a week of paraphrasing, of making synoptic notes, of distilling what the teachers said, what the textbooks got, what Richard Thornley's done on YouTube, what MST or Chemical on YouTube, try some smashing science, being interactive. That's the main thrust of this, being interactive. Just sat there on the, the, the underground, the, the bus, the train, the car, reading the textbook again. Just be silent. It's not doing much. I watched a wonderful, um, I think it was a TED talk, and it was talking about the, the presenter was talking about what's important. It's going back to this Hussein Bolt, he was not the fastest in school. But what did he have? Well, knowledge is very important. It's important to know that the entropy of the universe is, is generally increasing and things increasing. Entropy is likely to happen if it's exothermic. That's knowledge. Practice is equally important as knowledge. And while many uh, plus 16, 16 to 18 pre-college, whatever you want to call it, courses, insist that students will memorize the entropy of combustion, entropy of formation, all these things, the idea expects you to know them, but you'll never be asked to define entropy of formation. They'll give you four equations, A, B, C, D, on top one, I say which one is the entropy of formation of a nuclear bomb site. Okay. And there'll be two eyes and half and all that stuff. And the states will be wrong, the ratio is wrong, and only one will be correct. And it's the application, and that comes with practice. Practice, use the past papers, use smashing science, use your, don't use Discord, don't use Reddit. Okay. And, and talent, talent at the end. Talent is a small T for a reason. Knowledge and practice are massive letters, huge font. They are font 72, knowledge 72, practice 72, talent, let's put that in Times New Roman size. Eight, ten, something like that. Okay. You may be able to do it, but that is not enough for either chemistry. Because this is what humans do. We forget stuff. Okay. I forget stuff. I forgot where I put my keys this morning. It took me 10 minutes to find the damn place. So here we are. We walk into class. Let's go Tuesday afternoon. We're at the optimum peak of our learning ability. It's Tuesday afternoon. We wander into our chemistry class. The teacher is brilliant. Delivers the lesson of their life to you. You're like the top of the world. I can crack that delta G question. No problem. You then go off. Go do some biology, some geography, some English, play sports, have dinner, watch a bit of Netflix, quick click, of course you read your notes before you go to sleep. And then you wake up in the morning, your teacher puts a question on, start of the lesson, 
about the previous lesson, teaching in my humble opinion, and you look and go, uh, that was how Ember feels. Because humans forget. Humans forget, and they are visual. Okay, so you first learn it after one day, you've got about 80%, 80% left in you. If you continue not to review, to reflect, to synthesize, to paraphrase the material that you are doing, by day three, you've only got 60% of that material left in you. And that's, you know, that's for an average uh, population sample. But the way to retain it is every day. So if you review it after 24 hours, and that's like 20 minutes to a fast book question on this thing that was in the lesson. Okay. Then you're going to get another three days, three more days bought to get like 80%. One day, first iteration, second iteration, you've got three more days. If you do it again on the third day, you've got another three days. And you can see that the gradient of the slope is becoming less as we go along. So the rate at which you are losing that volume of knowledge decreases with every review. So, you know, this is all about regularly reviewing your material. Just because you understood moles in January doesn't mean you can put that away and worry about my energetics, my kinetics, my equilibria. And then at the end of the year, when I have my end of the year one exam, for instance, you do need to go back to the mold. And you may have to start from square one or square two to, to actually get back to the synthetic understanding that you had at the beginning of the course. But if you do that 20 minutes a couple of times a week, as you build and build and build, because we are building the course as we go through, you can't keep losing the course, you just crash when you get to the end. So, what are the main things I want to put here? You know, do something that, that you're proud of. Go back to that student's notes, that student's notes, to right at the beginning of this presentation. Here they are on the right hand side. You can see the pride in that student's notes that they have created. They are theirs, they are their own. Make things your own. Love it, make it your own. Use as many, you know, quality streets, licorice all sorts. Sushi, <laughs> many different kinds of material, and see what works for you. There was some trial and error at the beginning. The old strategies of past papers and mark schemes, battling a mate, have a, have a chemistry party, okay? get your mates around, go through some hybridization. Remember, yes, there is now and again this crazily smart kid that doesn't even need to be in the class. The rest of us have to do a big P practice, have lots of K knowledge for us to not fall down the forgetting curve and end up not knowing anything, even though we've been studying hard all day. So love what you do, get a space to work in, celebrate your knowledge, and get the best IV you possibly can. Remember, everything starts with your well-being. If you are not healthy and happy in the first place, studying anything is going to be very difficult. Stay well, stay safe. Thanks for listening. Don't forget, smash that subscribe button.